Hey what's up guys, welcome to tutorial number 2 of the series Unity Shader Graph and today we are going to see a fantastic way of creating portal effects. That's right, the portal effects you are seeing are mostly done with Shader Graph and with a little bit of help from the particle systems. Shaders and particle systems complement each other very well. By the way guys, all of these shaders are available in my Patreon, including this scene with the portals, in case you are interested to have access. You can get some great effects package and shaders as well, go check it out, it's really worth it. Anyway, let's see how we can create this portal effect. By the way guys, in case you need to know how to set up Shader Graph in Unity, you can watch the introduction video of this series and learn how to install it. Links in the description in case you are interested. Now, the first thing we need to do is start by creating a PBR shader, you can press right click and rename it to portal shader for example and double click it to open in shader graph or press this button right here. Now once shader graph is open and in case you haven't noticed these portals have a twisted effect in the middle and we can achieve that with the twirl node and we can press spacebar to search for a twirl node and as you can see one of the prompts that comes with this node is the strand parameter which will let us control how much distortion we are going to output in this case. And we can already start by creating a vector one to control the strength in the inspector just like this. I'm gonna set the value to around 10 and now we can right click it and convert it to a property just like this. And I'm going to rename it to twirl strand. Alright cool. Now there's different ways to approach this effect obviously but I like to use a Voronoi node which creates an awesome effect when distorted with the twirl. And we can connect the output to the UV of the Voronoi node, just like this. And as soon as you connect it, it will twirl our Voronoi texture. And we can decrease it if you want. But there is also an interesting parameter in the Voronoi node, which is the cell density. And we can go ahead and create a vector one to control this cell density publicly in the inspector. I'm gonna set it to two and a half and connect it to cell density and convert it to a property which I'm going to rename to scale. It would look very much like a scale parameter. All right, so now once we have these two nodes, we can go ahead and connect it to the emission. And I actually don't like this sphere to preview this shader so I'm going to right click it and change to a quad and as soon as I start rotating this quad I'm noticing that it's only one sided which is not really good for a portal effect if you think about it and to make it double sided we can click in this settings icon and just check two sided just like this and now if you rotate it you will notice that it's two sided which is what we want and we can go ahead and actually connect the Voronoi to the alpha just like this, no problem. And you will notice that nothing happens because this shader is set to an opaque surface. And we can actually change it in this setting icon to a transparent surface just like this. And you may notice it's looking different, but we can't actually really see it. So let's press save asset and go to the inspector to unit. And create a material out of this shader just like this and I'll create a quad or a plane and let's drag and drop our new material to the material slot just like this and now we can see the transparency taking effect which is great which is what we want if it was opaque we would see anything behind the portal shader basically anyway now as you may notice our portal shaders is also moving around and it's rotating around actually and we can shift that effect with a time node. Time nodes are extremely useful to make things move around or rotate around and it's an important part of many shaders. And we can actually create a vector one which should be enough for this portal shader. I'm going to set it to 0 0.5 and create a multiply node so we can control the time with our vector one and connect the output of the multiply to the offset twirl and as soon as you do it you will notice in the preview of our Voronoi that it's taking effect 
which is awesome, which is great. And let's actually convert this vector1 to a public property and rename it to speed. Yeah, just like this, great. This is starting to look like something and we can take a step further by creating a texture to d in our property panel. And rename it to mask, because it will be really useful to apply this shader to a mask to a certain part of a texture, for example, instead of occupying the whole quad or the whole geometry surface. I'm gonna push it right here to the top and create a sample texture to denote and now we can basically drag and drop our mask property just like this. Alright, great. And let's assign a texture and I'm gonna choose one that probably everyone has in their project because it comes as a default texture in Unity and it's the default particle. And of course you can use another mask which I will demonstrate in a few moments. Anyway, now what we want to do is create a multiply node connect the sample texture to D and the output of the Voronoi and as you can see we are basically only applying the Voronoi effects to our texture and we can connect the output of the multiply node to the emission input of our PBR shader and also connect it to the alpha property as well alright great and in the preview it may seem like it's really small but we are going to see how to fix that and how to maximize this effect in just a few moments. Let's just save this asset, go to Unity and in our quad, in our material, we want to select a texture for our mask and I'm going to basically select the same texture that I have selected in Shader Graph, which is the default particle. And yeah, like I said, it's looking really small. But before fixing that, let's add some color to this. And we can add color in our property panel, just like this. I'm going to select the purple for now. You can push the color to the top, just like this. And let's actually switch the color mode to an HDR mode. And drag and drop to around here. And now again we want to multiply this color with the output of our multiply. So we are going to use another multiply node. And connect the color and the multiply, just like this. Great. And great, we have color right now, awesome. Let's again replace the emission and the alpha with this new multiply node. Now we can press save asset and go back to the inspector because now with the HDR color we can increase the intensity and therefore make the portal more visible. And for those who saw the last tutorial you also know there's another way of controlling the color brightness. Ok, now let's increase the twirl strength to around 30, yeah, that looks fine. Alright, so wouldn't it be cool to control the dissolve amount of our portal? Well, we can do that with a simple power node. And we can connect the Voronoi to A and create a vector one to control the power strength, just like this. Now let's just convert this vector one to a property and rename it to something like Dissolve Amount, for example. And then we can replace the Multiply connection with the Power node. Alright, cool. Let's save this and head back to Unity. And now, as you can see, we can adjust the Dissolve Amount to around 2, depending on the effect we are trying to achieve, of course, and it's starting to look really great. Alright, so now I have just adjusted the quad to the portal that I created just to show you how we can apply some quick particles and make this a little bit more interesting, of course. And I'm gonna choose a greenish color and increase the scale to 3.5. And we can also increase the intensity, by the way. Alright, it's looking good. So let's create a particle system and simply rename it to particles. And now we can set the duration to 1 and it's going to loop. The start lifetime is going to be between 0.8 and 1.6, should be enough. Let's give you a tiny amount on the start speed between 0.2 and minus 0.2. Nothing really special. And the size it's going to be between 0.1 and 0.4. Maybe a bit less, maybe a bit more. It really depends on what you're trying to achieve as well. Anyway, the color in my case it's going to be between a vivid green and a yellowish green. Now, the shape, the shape is going to be a circle. And I'm going to increase the radius until it touches the inside of the portal. 
cool. Now, let's give it a fade in and a fade out in the color of a lifetime. And the size of a lifetime can go from big to small. And you can also increase the rate over time if you want. And to give some more randomness to the particles, if you want, you can turn on noise and set the strength random between 0.2 and 0.8. Increase the frequency to around 0.8 as well and set the scroll to 0.2. Yeah, that's looking fine, it gives some more randomness. Now, in case you are in a 2018 Unity version, we can turn on velocity over lifetime, so we can set the Z of the orbital X to around 2. It's a cool trick to make the particles seem like they are rotating with the portal. A really awesome feature, actually. Now, it's looking good, and if you have made it this far, there's only one last quick trick we can use, which is adding a black circle behind the portal. And we can do it with another particle system, rename it to Dark Beam with a duration of 1 second, which will also loop and will also have 1 second for the start lifetime. And in my case, I'm gonna set 5 to the start size. And the color is going to be a full black or a dark green as well, it may go well. And we don't need shape, so we can disable it and set the rate over time to zero because we are going to use the burst of one. Now, down here in the render, let's just set the render alignment to local so we can control the rotation and the max particle size to three. And we can also control the order in layer, for example, in my case, it's going to be minus one so it renders behind the portal. And yeah, that's looking really cool now. Of course, you can add a crazy amount of stuff to these portals, you can make them look really cool. For example, I have added some electricity and it gives a really nice touch. You can see my tutorial on thunder and lightning if you are interested in creating electricity. In case you are also interested, everything is available on my Patreon page. Depending on the pledge, you will get some awesome rewards. There's shaders, there's effects, there's really a cool amount of stuff. Go check it out, it's really worth it. Link is in the description. And that's it guys, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Stay tuned for the next one, it's also going to be about the shader. Maybe the water shader, maybe the flame shader, we will see. But that's it guys, I hope you have enjoyed it and see you in the next video.